Hello everyone and welcome back. Here is my updated IBC tote rainwater harvesting system. Uh, last video this system was 550 gallons. I now upgraded it to 1100 gallons. Uh, there's There were a lot of changes I made. Uh, first, maybe you'll notice that the tanks are on center blocks now, not bricks. Uh, it's not much of a difference, uh, maybe six to seven inches, but that does give me a little bit more um, of a gravity feed. The higher the tanks are, the, the better the flow of water. Also, in order to get these four tanks, I had to move the fence. And you can see here where I, I moved the fence back. I have two more totes back there. I plan on stacking those, and then uh, once stacked, uh, the amount of pressure uh, that the the stack tanks will produce the water there will be enough pressure to fill my toilets and I'm gonna hook those up to the toilets um, so let's see where do we start we'll start with uh, the downspout where the water comes off the roof and into the first flush system uh, that was a two inch downspout I increased it to three inches I calculated the size of my roof and the amount of rainfall I could possibly get. A two inch pipe uh, was not large enough. It only flowed 20, a two inch pipe will only flow 28 gallons of water in a minute. Uh, my roof was capable of producing more than that, so I increased to three inches. A three inch pipe will, will flow 63 gallons of water in a minute, which is more than I'll ever need. Um, so it, it's always better to overbuild than to underbuild. Uh, you could also see uh, I did move the downspout. It was here. Uh, I covered that up with a piece of gutter and put caulk on it. Uh, put a small weight on it and let it sit for a day and dry and it works just fine. Uh, some of you may be asking about or thinking about the bottle that was in the first flush system and now that bottle will not work because I increased the size. Uh, I have not found a new bottle that will work. Um, I can find one, I just haven't taken the time to do that yet. I did watch a video though over um, some research Texas A&M did. And their study shows that um, only a foot below the first flush system, so like here, only the water from here to here will be disturbed. All other water uh, below that will still not be disturbed. All right, well, I'm going to take you down to the other end of the system and show you what I have going on there. All right, we have uh, quite a bit going on down here. Uh, one thing I did change, I moved my water faucet, wa water faucet, water faucet uh, connection here. It was on this end last time. I have my dump valve down there, now the big red handle, to empty my tanks if I ever need. Uh, the reason for the move here was the water comes in the first tank and then flows down and fills these tanks. And all my flow is directed this way and I don't want restriction. If I was to have this on the other end, I'd be going against the natural flow of the water, which would decrease my pressure. Uh, See, the next thing we have going on is the adapters we have. You see this one is different than the other three. Uh, ideally, if you could find totes that automatically fit these, that's what you want. Uh, but the reality of buying used IBC totes is that's not a reality. The reality is you're going to get multiple different types. Here is the other adapter I used for these, these totes see if you can see the threads they're very coarse I'll do a video on all the different type of adapters um, for IBC totes and where you can find them but for now if you know that this is a buttress thread uh, you could look that up and find someone that has a buttress thread to NTP pipe um, thread and that's all you need but you can't find these in any store you'll have to order them on the internet um, I wasted a lot of time looking in stores. Just order them directly. Um, 
Google it, you can find them. Uh, a lot of people will use these um, rubber collars and, and put them here. And there's nothing wrong with these. Uh, these work, uh, but uh, these are practically a dollar or two dollars difference in price and a little bit of waiting time for these to come in the mail. But I would recommend these over anything. This is the proper piece to get. Uh, here you'll see a, uh, this is called a union. And what a union does is splits in half. So this allows me to remove any of my tanks at any time uh, and not have to cut my pipe. Uh, and that's if I want to move it to another location, if I want to change the design, I want to make them vertical instead of horizontal. Uh, if I ever sold the system and someone wanted to buy it and set it up at their house, then uh, this would be a really easy swap and change and being able to be able to move everything. Uh, let me show you. All right, let me show you a little bit closer um, shot of these unions. I put I used a threaded union for the purpose of if you ever need it to change the length of these pipes, you need it to change anything. That this is the only glued part, and you could just lose this part and cut that off if if need be, and you could save this. And this is the expensive piece, so this is a piece you would want to save. Um, one more thing on these adapters, I didn't show you these. Uh, one more thing on your IBC tote adapters. Here is another adapter. This is called a cam lock adapter, and most of your 330 gallon totes, or from my experience, 330 gallon totes have more are more. Um, common to have a cam lock adapter and this my adapter screws right on like that I'll show you this I haven't used this yet but in a later video I will and I'll show you okay the overflow pipe is the one thing I have not finished yet you can see it goes down and it doesn't quite get to the end I have plans to just to wrap it around that tank bring it down to the ground and put a uh, 90 on it where it just uh, where it'll flow then uh, onto a piece of concrete just like your regular gutter would uh, I, I just ran out of pipe haven't had a chance to get that yet uh, also here with this lid I will show you one thing on this I ran into one problem and I'll show you the fix I had on it okay when I when I originally did this, and I did this two inches, now this cap, this cap fits right in here, and then this pipe fits right in here, and the water flows in. Uh, the biggest problem I had was how do I get this to, to be cinched down, to hold, to hold it down? And this is how I did uh, the two inch, a male to female, and I just screwed them tight. The problem is, this is as tight as it gets. Even with um, pipe wrenches trying to crank it down tight, you can't get it much tighter than this. Uh, also, there was nothing I could find that, uh, like Lowe's, Home Depot, anywhere that had a gasket that would work. I ended up just making a gasket. And this is just uh, a rubber mat, three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, I actually was able to cut this circle with the hole saw I had, uh, and that's the same saw I used with the uh, the same tool I used with the aquaponics to to make uh, holes for my net pots. Uh, this is a three and a half inch hole, and let me show you how this goes on. Okay, it's that simple. All it just fits right inside my cap. Now I don't have near as much big as a gap. It allows me, this allows me to tighten it down real tight. This is just hand tight right now, but you, you tighten it down with a uh, pipe, pipe wrench and caulk around the edges here. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but this I'm still in a, a testing mode with my system. But that's how I, I solved that problem.